Praise the Lord! Nakawa na ako kay, nakawa na ako kay brother. Pastor Jolly, wherever you are, God bless you. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's uh, bow our heads and pray. Hallelujah. Father, we are so grateful and thankful today. Lord, you're awesome, you're great, you're so good. Father. Hallelujah. And faithful indeed, Lord. Thank you, Lord, as you gathered us today. Lord, may your Holy Spirit again be with us, have his way, Lord, in giving us, oh Lord, the understanding, the wisdom, in order for us to really comprehend your words, oh God. Lord, let your Holy Spirit prevail, oh God, and take away all unpleasant things, all uh, misunderstanding, misconception, Lord, that the devil is wanting to give us, Lord, and put in our minds and heart, Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I proclaim uh, wisdom and clearness of mind, Father. We praise you. We honor you, Father, and I lift up to you the whole TJF family, O oh God, for your words and revelation. We praise you in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, um, I really would like to, to encourage you to be excited in our first anniversary, fifth year anniversary, yeah. you know, and secondly, the, the uh, outreach that we'll be going to do again in January. There's already a place that was booked, and that is in Stratford, very near to us. So we will be greatly involved to that. And I'm asking and pleading all for your help again, as we have done it uh, successfully in Birmingham. So today, uh, now it is more nearer to us. So uh, I really am hoping and praying that everyone will be involved in helping out. Amen. And I pray to the Lord for another success of that outreach. Yeah. And also, uh, I really would like to uh, encourage you to really be involved in our anniversary. And please try to invite people. You know, invite your friends, your colleagues, your uh, uh, schoolmate, uh, workmates, workmates, and. Even uh, your neighbors, if you do, you know, uh, please. Because we have to be proud of our family, amen? Amen. Yes. Uh, I am proud. You know, so, uh, please, uh, we are expecting people to come, and uh, we will be uh, excited about it. Uh, the Bible study goes very well again, because, you know, it has uh, been uh, postponed for several weeks. And glory be to God, again, it was continued. And glory be to God that it was really, again, another successful one. You know? you. And we have been uh, discussing about you know, us being carnal. You know? And that is one of the, the most or the biggest problem of many, many people, not only the world out there, but mostly Christians, because of the compromising things that uh, we might not be intentionally knowing that we are living carnally and not spiritually. And in our Bible study, we discuss about it. And today, there's another one which is so related to that. And as what uh, Sister Ruth is saying, that we are called brothers and sisters. Amen. And you have to believe that in your heart. Amen. Because if you don't believe that you are called, then you will do nothing of greatness for the Lord. You have to be convincing yourself that you are a cold child of God. Amen. Otherwise, you won't do your best. Believe me. You know, kung hindi ka naniniwala, uh, sorry, this in our language, kung hindi ka naniniwala ang tao, tinawag ka ng Diyos, if you don't believe that you are cold, you won't do the best thing for the Lord. Amen. You know? You'll just be half-hearted. You'll just do things like this. But if you believe that you are really cold, believe me, that you will come to a point wherein you will really realize that God is the number one and priority of life. And this is because of the eternal life that you are hoping for. Huh? Because only the Lord can give you that. Nobody can. And if you don't give your best, you won't have the best gift, which is eternity. Believe me, that's as simple as that. And let me ask you, as 
the title of our message is Seasoned Forever. Are you seasoned for God? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you seasoned for God? You, what is the universal uh, seasoning? What is the universal seasoning or common seasoning of all? Salt. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, salt is the universal seasoning of all. You know, salt is a necessity of life, brothers and sisters. It was a mineral that used since ancient times. In many cultures, a seasoning, a preservative, a disinfectant, a cleanser, a stain remover, you know, in many ways, deodorant, especially in the kitchen, a component of ceremonial offerings, especially in the Old Testament times. And as a unit of exchange, they used this as a barter. They changed salt for something else before in the Old Testament times. And the Bible it contains numerous references, like, for example, in Leviticus 2.13, and every offering of your grain, offering of your grain, you shall season with salt. The Lord said, You shall not allow the salt of the covenant of your God to be lacking from your grain offering. With all your offerings, you shall offer salt. So salt is so important to the Lord before that all their offerings are combined with salt. And that is to God. That is how important salt is to Him. In Exodus 30, 35, it says, You shall make of this as incense a compound according to the art of perfumery, salted, pure, pure and holy. Yeah? And this is from the very beginning. In Numbers 18, it talks about the holy offerings made by the Israelites to the Lord. And these offerings are not just ordinary offerings, brothers and sisters. These are holy offerings to the Lord. This is what the Lord says on the heave offerings. You know what heave offerings is? These are the offerings that after Aaron is uh, offering that to the Lord, he will raise it up high. You know, pag nag offer tayo, uh, we are just offering something, but before, they offer it, Lord, this is for you. They're glorifying the Lord and raising it up high. That's why it was called the heave offerings. You know, and the heave offerings are the best offerings of all. And it is being lifted up by the high priest Aaron to the Lord when he do the offerings to God. He means to lift up with great effort. That is the dictionary definition of it. This can mean literally or symbolically. That means it is the best. That's why our offerings, believe me, it should be your best. Because if you give not the best to the Lord, it is like... Cain, offering something which is not of his best. What happened? You know what happened to Cain's offering, isn't it? It was not considered by God. Because it was not the best. But Abel, giving the best, the fat portions and the first fruit of what he gained, was, you know, considered and was honored by the Lord. And that how should our offerings be? You know, in Numbers 8 to 9, it says, And the Lord spoke to Aaron, Here I myself have also given you charge of my heave offerings. All the holy gifts of the children of Israel, I have given them as a portion to you and your sons as an ordinance forever. These shall be yours of the most holy things reserved from the fire, even every offering of theirs, every grain offerings, and every sin offerings, and every trespass offerings which they render to me shall be the most holy for you and your sons. Why is this like this? Because the Levites are the only tribe that doesn't have any inheritance. And their inheritance is the Lord. And the Lord's gift to them is that everything that was given to the Lord belongs to them. Because the Levites are the chosen tribe to, to uh, take care of the holy things of God. And that's who we are, brothers and sisters. You are called to take care of the holy things of God. You're not just ordinary Christians. Why? Because you are serving here. You are serving there. You know why we're so small? Because we are the Levites. That I believe in my heart. Why? Because you are serving God. 
You are being the one to take care of the holy things of God. You're not just a Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe Christian. No. You're not just somebody who just came out, go home, come, go home every Sunday. No. You are there to serve the Lord. The holy things of God is what you are doing. You are worshiping. You are leading the people to worship. We are preaching. We are, we are studying the word. We are declaring it. You know, we are having the outreach. We have been called to undergo and to take care of the holy things of the Lord. That's why, you know, we are so blessed, brothers and sisters. Not everyone are called to do the holy things of God. Believe me. Numbers 18, 19 said, All the heave offerings of the holy things which the children of Israel offered to the Lord, I had given to you, your sons and daughters, with you as an ordinance forever. Take note, ordinance forever. When we say forever, lasting po ito. No? It is a covenant of salt. Forever before the Lord, with you and your descendants, with you. A covenant of salt. In Numbers 18, 29 to 30, continues, Of all your gifts, you shall offer up every heave offerings due to the Lord, from all the best of them. Again, the best is there. Offerings, the best. The consecrated part of them. Therefore, you shall say to them, When you have lifted up the best of it, then the rest shall be accounted to the Levites as the produce of the threshing floor and as the produce of the wine press. No. And in Numbers 18.32, it says, And you shall bear no sin because of it. It was given upon the best. That wa that's why the sin is taken out by the Lord to them. That's why if we are offering, brothers and sisters, and it's not the best, believe me, you are sinning against God, basically. Please uh, attend to that man, what he wants. But you shall not profane the holy gifts as the children of Israel, lest you die. Remember, there's a warning there. After giving the best, the Lord said, you shall not profane. What is profaning? Desecrating. Lalapastanganin mo. Yan po. That's what it says. That you will, you will desecrate it. Profaning is desecrating the holy gifts of the children of Israel. Lest you die. Very, very harsh po. Ang, ang warning na yan. And believe me, on the Old Testament times, whatever sin you make, whatever uh, desecration that you make, on the spot, the Lord is killing those wicked people. And we're so blessed, you know, that those kinds of, uh, of uh, uh, the way that uh, God acts on wickedness is not happening now. Why? Because the love of God actually had extended. He became more compassionate to us, giving us all the opportunity to repent and make things right before Him, before it's too late, brothers and sisters. You know? These important verses clearly shows, first, how important and holy are offerings to God. It's not that He needs it, but it is sanctified and made holy by Him as an act of worship, and reverence. And he requires, brothers and sisters, the best of our offerings as he deserves the best. Amen? Amen. Do you believe that? That the yes. Lord deserves the best. Hallelujah. And it is an everlasting covenant that he made to the children of Israel, his chosen people. Now, you may ask, or you may probably say, oh, we are not the Israelites. These are only applicable to those people of the Old Testament times. But let me ask you, do you believe you are chosen? Amen. Are you the chosen people of God? Chosen then you are like to be the Israelites. Hallelujah. Otherwise, if you don't consider yourself chosen, then 
those blessings that they got, it won't happen to you. Because we are chosen people. Hallelujah. Believe me, Christians are chosen people of God. Hallelujah. No? Unfortunately, not all Christians are true. That's the thing. Maybe some of you will say and think, oh, just like the ungodly people there. You know, it's not for us, really. It's not for us, it's for them. Just like I've heard so many people saying, oh, tithes is on the Old Testament times only. You know, it is not applicable to the New Testament. No, they're wrong. Because words of the Lord are everlasting. It is forever until you die. You know, these are everlasting covenant of soul that applies to you and to me if you consider yourself a chosen people of God Hallelujah. or a chosen child of God. The Bible says God never changed, brothers and sisters. He is faithful in his words. In Hebrews 13, 18, look. God never changed. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Kaya may forever. The same today, yesterday, today, and forever. His words will never change, you know? Now, in the New Testament time, the Lord speaks about salt in somewhat different state and manner. If the Lord speaks salt, during those times, literally as salt. Now, in the New Testament times, the Lord Jesus Christ talks about the salt in a very different manner and state. He addresses salt as not a grain of salt that you see, you know, that we normally knew and seasoned in the food like this and like that. No. And amazingly, he uses a very special kind of matter in place of it. A special component he requires in his offerings. Do you know what it is? Do you know what is salt in the New Testament? Let us bring Matthew 5.13. What is the salt in the New Testament? You are the salt of the earth, brothers and sisters. You. Ikaw ang asin in the New Testament times, you know? You are the holy things that God wants because you are the salt of the earth today. You have to realize this, brothers and sisters. You are the salt of the earth, you know? Because you are the holy things for the Lord. You are the best things for the Lord. But if the salt loses its flavor, as he said, Matthew 5, 13, please. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Is it then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men? So, the question is, can we, can we lose our saltiness? How can salt become unsalty? Maalat ka pa rin ba sa Panginoon? You can ask yourself, are you still salty? Or you already have lost, or you are little by little losing your saltiness? Because this can happen, brothers and sisters. Otherwise, the Lord will not say that. But if you lose your saltiness, you will be trampled and thrown underfoot by men. Yes, the Lord says, you are the salt. The question is, are you salty? Or are you losing your salt? You are seasoning that the Lord wants. You are the preservatives that the Lord wants. Amen. You are the disinfectant that the Lord wants. You know? Hallelujah. You are the stain remover Hallelujah. that the Lord wants. You are the deodorizer. You know? And you are the holy offerings that the Lord desires. Hallelujah. God wants you. 
Romans 12, 1 to 2 said. Let me just prove it to you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed to the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. The Bible even speaks that we are God's temple, aside from being the living sacrifice, the holy one that is being sacrificed to the Lord. In 1 Corinthians 6, 18 to 20, he said, flee sexual immorality. Every sin that man does outside his body, but he who commits sexual immorality sin against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Is the Holy Spirit in you still? Amen. Whom you have from God and who are not your own. For where, you're bought, for where you are bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body, in your spirit, which is God's saying that we have to be holy, brothers and sisters. We should be holy. Why? Because God is holy, isn't it? Hallelujah. In 1 Peter 3, 13 to 16, 1, 13 to 16, it says, Therefore, geared up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is be brought to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance. But he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy. It is a command, brothers and sisters, that we must all be holy as children, true children of God. Amen? And that is so awesome. Imagine we're being used by God as a replacement for the salt that he needs in his delight. As a seasoning for him, to him forever. Are you not so glad and joyful to be a seasoning for God? Amen. Are you not be thankful to be chosen by God to be with him forever? You know, believe me, if you don't really consider and if you don't uh, really see the very essence of being a great seasoning for the Lord, you are missing the point of being a child of God. I'm so glad, brothers and sisters. I'm so joyful and thankful and forever be grateful and blessed for such a blessing and this opportunity that was given to me. And I hope you do as well. I have no intention of wasting or taking it for granted. And I hope every one of us are the same, you know? And to be the soul of the earth is what God declares me to be is the greatest position and place that I can. And I'm, I do appreciate, you know? Just imagine you making something good preserving the goodness and changing something for goodness or taking out the bad on something else or somebody else, that's a great, great thing for the Lord. And in the end, you being good and faithful, you know, and holy yourself will be the Lord, your creator forever. And that is so hallelujah, you know, that is so awesome and glorious, brothers and sisters. Again, let me ask, can a soul lose its saltiness? What happens if being a salt lose your saltiness? The Bible says in Mark 9, 50 says, Salt is good, but if the salt loses its salt flavor, how will you season it? Have, have the salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. How will you season an unsalty salt? Kung matabang ka na, paano ka pa gagawa ng pleasing sa Lord? If you are not salty anymore, you won't be able to please the Lord. Believe me. 
Because everything that you will do is not your best. It will be half-hearted. It will be compromising. It will be lukewarm. You know? And that will happen if you are losing your saltiness. Matthew 5.13, again, let me show it to you. What happened if you lose your saltiness? You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. This is the same like saying, you are a branch that is not connected to the vine. What will happen to you? You will die out, dried out, and be cut off by God and be burned. That's what ha will gonna happen. This is the same as the salt. If you lose your saltiness, you will be trampled underfoot by men. Yes, the Bible speaks clearly that we can lose our saltiness, but how? How can a salt become unsalty? Of course, contamination, brothers and sisters. Let's say if you put water and salt together and pour so many salt, it becomes salty. But if you add more and more things, polluting it and contaminating it, the saltiness will be gone. Isn't it? A very common sense. Pollution and contamination is the simplest possible way of, I can say, you will use your saltiness. Contamination, pollution from what? Letting ourselves be swayed and affected by patterns of this fallen and wicked world. Despite of having been sanctified and been set apart by God, His chosen people, we will be com uh, contaminated and polluted with, God, uh, with, with the world's good poison. Do you believe that? That the world has so many good poisons. You know? Romans 12, 2 to 3 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, though the grace given to me, everyone is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Many among us chose to play around with God, brothers and sisters thinking that they can or, or may change God's stand on His holiness and righteousness. Because He is a loving God. So many people are saying, oh, the Lord will understand me. You know? And one, one, uh, one uh, very typical example is the homosexuality. Mm. So many people are so homosexual in this generation. Why? Because they are thinking that God is so loving that He will understand being homosexual. Yeah. Believe me, they are fooling themselves. God will never, never back down in His holiness and righteousness. Otherwise, He is not God anymore. He is not, not perfect anymore. Believe me. If that's the God that you serve, then this family doesn't worship that kind of God. The God that TJF served is a holy and righteous God, faithful and never changing in His words. Amen. Believe me. Amen. Amen, amen. And to me, it's not the God anymore if that happens. And believe me, it, will not, it won't happen to my God. Because that is the God that we serve, brothers and sisters, holy, righteous, and perfect. He will never, ever, ever, ever commit mistakes or do mistakes or do evil to you and to me. The words of God has only one purpose, to make us good, to be righteous and holy so that we can be with Him. You know, God is indeed loving and so merciful, compassionate to all, giving us all the opportunity to make things right before it's too late, brothers and sisters. Before it's too late. Don't waste your time doing those wicked things. 
those wrongful things that you surely and certainly knew that is not pleasing to the Lord. If you're doing something not good, if you're doing something unpleasing to God, let me tell you, stop it, repent, and go and be right with the Lord before it's too late. Don't play around with the devil because the devil can just destroy you and kill you just like that if you are doing what is pleasing to him. Believe me. God means serious business in his kingdom. He only means your goodness and wellness. Don't play around with fire because it will surely burn you. If you're playing around with fire, it will burn you. That is true. God is loving and merciful, but he is righteous and will punish the wicked. Hallelujah. Beware, brothers and sisters. And lust and pride are the good poisons of this world that really is eating up so many, and mind you, so many Christians. In John, 1 John 2, 15 to 17, as we nearly close. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Very simple and straightforward. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The world is passing away and the last of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Hallelujah. The will of God is us, for us to be salt, to be salty all the time. You know, not losing a single saltiness in us. Proverbs 16, 5. Most of the time, this is the very killer of Christians. Pride of life. What the Bible says about proud people, everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though they join forces, none will go and punish. The Lord will punish those proud Christians. Believe me. You know? You are and we are the salt of the earth, brothers and sisters especially chosen by God to be. Don't waste it for nothing. Don't take it for granted. And don't be deceived by others or even yourselves having that pride of you saying that you are better than his righteous words. We know what is right in the words of God. Do not play around with it. Remember, God never changed and will never, ever, ever change. And never do, especially to his precious words. He will always be faithful and remain faithful. He is faithful to bless and he is faithful to punish. No? Hindi lamang siya faithful sa blessing, brothers and sisters. Maging sa kanyang, kanyang kaparusahan. That is how faithful God is. He is faithful all the way to the blessings and to the punishments. God loves you, but hates sin. Amen. Let me repeat it. God loves you so much, but he hates the sin that you might be doing right now. So repent before it's too late. In Exodus 34, 6, 7, our last verse for today. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercies to thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and your children's children to the third and the fourth generation. Look at that. Is that not so horrible? Your sin will even go to the third and fourth generation of your descendants, your children. 
because of that sin that you're committing against the Lord. Brothers and sisters, he will never leave the guilty unpunished. God will surely punish the unrepentant and guilty Christians. Believe me. Therefore, let us repent and do the right thing with the Lord. Amen? God bless us all. Amen.